So me and Danny just arrived at uh, our, our hostel, 123 Tayo. I'm about to enter and take a quick look around. Two futons. Pretty sick. Air conditioning, key. First meal in Japan. Very, very local noodle place. Having some udon. We're in the Osaka Museum of History right here. And this piece is absolutely amazing. How cool is that? Here we are on this tower that uh, Danny is not a fan of. You made it up. He said he's not. It's not high enough. The Tenpozen Ferris Wheel. Been a long day. The attractions haven't exactly lived up to the hype. So me and Danny are hoping this one will set us right before we go to bed tonight. Can't wait. Apparently one of the world's largest Ferris wheels, over a thousand two hundred meters tall. See you guys at the top. All right, here we are at the at the top of the Ferris wheel. Over a kilometer high up, and you can see the Temple Zen uh, Bridge and all the night skylines of Osaka. Really beautiful, but very slow. Guys, I'm exhausted. It's been a long day. Danny's brushing his teeth right now. And I just want to talk about the final attraction of the day that I went to, that Danny didn't because for some reason doesn't like that kind of stuff, Outdoor Hot Springs. And the best part about it all is they have this bed uh, that's under a wooden roof and you put your head on the log and you literally lie on the bed naked. But you think, okay, well, I'm going to get cold. Well, no. They have a, a slight stream of hot water just running through the bed continuously. So you're, you're laying on a sheet of hot water and it's absolutely amazing. The only issue I have, and it's not that big of an issue to be honest, because I, I don't know, I like to think I'm open-minded, but does everyone have to be naked? I mean, you couldn't you know, wrap a towel around you or, or uh, I don't know, wear a bathing suit? It's just weird, and halfway through there's this, this cleaning lady that just walks in, and she doesn't care, and you've got like absolutely nothing on, it's just, it's a little awkward, I mean, even for me. At the Osaka Natural Museum, look at these mammoths. It's like the Night in the Museum, that movie where uh, all the all the animals came back to life. Got to represent the Toronto Raptors right here. Look at this guy. That's freaky. He looks like a turd, and look how beady his eyes are. Nasty. Dang it. I took a video. Hold on. We had to do a huge giraffe. You gotta walk so slow, man. <laughs> Check out this sheep. I'm about to feed it. Yeah, you want? Oh, took it right from my hand. This guy. Here's a video of the indecisive elephant. He's been trying to take this step. For the past 10 minutes that we've been here watching him. See, the back leg is uh. I've been watching him for 10 minutes. That's the sadder part. No, oh, almost, almost. He just can't plant that front leg. What's wrong with him? Okay, maybe this will be the one. No, 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 no. You can tell he's been there for a while. Look at the dung. So we arrived in uh, Kyoto late last night. We're on our way to see a cool temple right now called Kinkakuji Temple. On the way, we got green tea ice cream, matcha. which is matcha ice cream, which is absolutely amazing. And we're in this sort of rural part of Kyoto, so it looks really nice. Like where we're staying in Kyoto right now is very Causeway Bay ish, so a lot of shopping malls and like high traffic areas, but these areas on their way to the temple. Really, really beautiful, lush green forest. So far, uh, Kyoto has been all about getting lost. Currently, we are in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. You can see. 
No road signs. Just uh, my little map here that we're trying to follow. And only a bit of Japanese from me to get us by. Danny is taking the lead, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't know where he's going. Got lost in rural Japan, but it's not a bad thing. Look at this place. Beautifully breathtaking. Definitely don't get to see stuff like this in Toronto. Check this out. Some random university, two Japanese girls playing lacrosse. What the heck? Checking in with an update. No, we're not lost anymore, but we are deep into the bamboo forest of Kyoto. Check this out. That's awesome, eh? Thank you. Not filming you. Talking about bamboos. All right, bamboo. Can't wait to eat tonight as we finish up our Kyoto walk of Arayashima area. I think that's what it's called. I may be wrong. I'm too lazy to look at my sheet. See you guys in a bit. Oh, here's a rickshaw. Oh, so many see you guys in a bit. Because they want updates. My fans. As in Victor. And today uh, I walked by this guy who was pulling this rickshaw and he complimented me on my Naruto shirt. How appropriate. Once again, we are lost in rural Japan, trying to find the bus. And some lady was explaining to me where to go, took her directions, well, as best I, as I can understand her, and turns out we're here. It's a nice area. Yeah, but it doesn't look like there are any buses going through here. <laughs> Hopefully, as we make this left turn, we'll see a big road with a bus stop. No, I see a mirror. Dingus. Where the heck are we? <laughs> Not tourist area. Lost Masters, I see no tourists here. Oh, yo, 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 there's a big road. Or is that a parking lot? I can't tell. Excuse me, sir. Koko stop or what is this? Katabira no tsuji. Yes, Katabira no tsuji is a road still in the road. There is a bus there. Bus there. Yes. 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 だ、もう一つ向こうに着、えっと、隅田区だいたいあるんですよね。だからまだ、ま、ちょっと。あ、わかりました。まっすぐ。で、そこは今アリスが渡る場所なんですよね。で、その隅田区だっていうところで、の次
tripped off an alarm and uh, I, I guess it was censored because some lady on a on a loudspeaker started speaking Japanese to us so I got really scared finally made it to the Kyoto International Manga Museum my socks are so my socks are soaked, I'm so wet, so cold. Chances are I'm gonna get sick, but look this place. This place is awesome. So I'm doing this workshop right now where you get to create your own anime hero or heroine. All right guys, I'm done. Here is my character. Last day in Japan. Here we are at Kobe. We got reservations tonight to eat at Moria for Kobe beef. We're here at Moria, about to have Kobe beef. Here is our beef. Obviously, it's not cooked yet, but I'll let you guys know how it tastes once uh, I put it in my mouth. Here, the chef is uh, making our sides. It's kind of cool because he, he's doing it right in front of us, and uh, he already did the garlic. Really, really cool. Here's the first cut to our Kobe beef. And it goes on that wooden plate palette right there. It's really cool. It's like tap tapanyaki style with legit Japanese chef. It caught me right in the act. Oh, that's cool. I think he's only going to focus on a couple of pieces at once. Oh, look at that. That's a fatty piece right there. Alright guys, I'm going to get a live reaction of my first taste of this Kobe beef steak. Just like Ambrose's videos. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. That is some tenderest steak. Wow. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like I don't I can't even explain it. It tastes like tofu but a real distinct tangy meaty taste. Amazing. Claim, proclaim in this Japanese village. All these guys are Japanese walking around. Go! I'm Chinese! The island belongs to us! <laughs> I don't eat that. Ah! Alright, now we're left cross tag. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. What are you scared of? You don't even hear you. You gotta do it now, man. No, I already did it. No, this is a cop car. Last night in Japan, I went to Kobe today and uh, went to a store called Book Off. And I picked up a, a couple of a couple of things I wanted to share with you guys. So you ready? Let's do this uh, A to the low style. Slowly. First piece right here. There you go. Check that out. Naruto Ninja Handbook. Sick. Actually, I got this uh, in Japanese. You guys can see. It's got character bios. Of all the characters up to, uh, up to I guess the Shippuden, mid Shippuden uh, area. It's the most recent one, anyways. Dragon Ball Z, Volume 22. Uh, I actually picked this one up because this is the first volume where uh, Goku goes Super Saiyan against Frieza. I can see towards the end uh, after Krillin dies. The biggest piece that I got today. Is this piece right here? You guys, ready for this? Oh yeah, a brand new sealed volume 24, final volume of a special collector's edition of Slam Dunk in Japanese, of course. Sealed final volume. This is the volume where they play uh, last year's champions. And of course, uh, I, will, I won't go on to ruin it for you guys. Definitely check this out if you guys haven't checked this manga series out. Um, this one was not on sale. 
and so I picked it up for uh, 600 yen. Actually, funny story about this is uh, I found a, a copy of the 24th volume on the foreign languages uh, shelf, and I got so excited because I thought it was English, so I checked it right away. I, I opened it up and it ended up being Korean, so I couldn't get a deal, but I'm very happy with this because, I don't know, I it's kind of cool. Hey! Anyways, those are the three things that I picked up in Japan from uh, Book Off. A lot of stuff. I had to hold back because I, I just want to buy volumes of everything. But then I realized that one, uh, I was limited on money, and two, I don't really know how to read Japanese that well. So I held back and just bought these three volumes. Of course, the coolest one is this one right here. Legit.